Episode four, Behind the Chips. Today I'm going to put all of this junk back on the machine. This is all stuff for the x-axis. We got the end bearing block that goes over there. The This is actually the uh, lead screw nut that will go up inside here. We'll see how interesting that goes. This is the stepper motor bracket, the coupling, and the x-axis stepper. So let me go ahead and uh, take off, take this stuff off here and take the table off and we'll go ahead and put the nut back in place and I'll go ahead and grease everything up. So. Okay, well that wasn't just so easy just to pull the table off. Um, last episode I set up the, the gibs in here and apparently when you get to the edges of the table it gets really tight. So I tried to pull it out, couldn't get it out. So what I'm going to do, since I've already preset this, is I'm just going to go ahead and mark the set screw and mark on the actual machine where I have it set up and then I'm going to unscrew this set screw and count my turns out so that I can put it back in the same amount and then I can take the gib out take the table off put everything back together and put that back in afterwards so that'll be a lot easier and Hopefully, well, well, hopefully it's easier. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, got that off. Got the gib out. And here is the lead screw nut. Now you're going to put it with the set screws on this side so you can actually get in there and adjust them. So there's just two set screws right in here that hold this in place in this little valley that's cut into this. So what I'm going to do is just kind of uh, just put it in there and just get it get them snug down just so it's holding them in in uh, kind of the right spot but it doesn't have to be perfect because we'll adjust that afterwards so i'll just get those just very really snug down and then i'm going to table up here and start putting it on there so that should fit in there like I've hit the threads so just go ahead and all right now you just got to kind of work your way threading it, threading it in there and I will come back when I'm done with that okay once you have the table on about that far what I would go ahead and do is put back in the the gib just to get it so where it doesn't flop around like this because right now you can see it's got a, a lot of play everywhere so you can't really really do these, these set screws down here I had to kind of play around with them, loosen them up, tighten them up again just to make sure it's kind of the same height because I had it too low where the uh, lead screw is actually trying to hit the table or the base of the machine so I'm going to go ahead and put that back in and I'll come back at that Okay, now on the end, I'm going to go ahead and put the bearing block on there. Uh, there's just two screws that hold it in, and it's aligned by these two pins on the back side. So what I'm going to do is just take those out so I don't drop them. Put them right there. And there. And I'm going to take the bearing out. Just I don't want everything to get lost um, while I'm messing around with it here. So I'm going to grease that back up anyways, and I'll leave the race in there. Just set those aside. You know this, and just kind of slide right on there. And get it lined up. I'm just going to use a little mallet here to... those pins in place and then put the screws back in I uh, can't see me doing it because I don't feel like changing the camera angle but these I would use a five millimeter Allen wrench just go ahead and spin those in there just go ahead and make sure I just kind of tighten them evenly I don't think this is too critical but Better be safe than sorry. So, 
that tightened down in there. And that's about it. Not much to put in that back on. And now what I'm going to go ahead and do is just check for how easy it is to move the whole thing by the handle at the other end. Nice and smooth. Just roll it out here so it's a little easier for me to work on it when I go ahead and put the stepper back on. And I'm going to switch here now and I'm going to show how you tighten up the lead screw nut. So let's do that now. Okay, so that is the two set screws that hold in the lead screw nut. Uh, sorry, it's a little dark in here. I don't have another light. But this is actually just a... This one fits the best that I've seen. These kind of goofy... Um, Badly made Chinese bolts, but uh, it's a 3 16 inch Allen. So what I did is I'm just kind of moving the lead screw back and forth, and I find that if you go ahead and turn it counterclockwise first, um, when you set this up, it kind of will straighten out the lead screw nut. So I'm just going to go ahead and since this one's different than the the Y axis, since there's actually a bearing at both ends. It's actually holding it straight, so we don't have to worry about making sure everything's nice, you know, perfectly straight and everything, because it's already actually doing that for us. The Y-axis actually only has one bearing at the stepper motor, or the drive end, so whereas this one has one at each end. So I'm just going to go ahead and get in here and do the best I can to tighten these. It's pretty tight space just because of what all's going on in here. This is probably the worst video ever, but you get the idea. That is going to work there. So let's go on to putting the stepper back on. Okay, so this is the end. I decided to put the stepper on. Now, some people will put it on the other side. That's really just a matter of choice. I thought it'd be easier to put it on this side only because the way I have the machine, it, the left hand side of it is in the corner. So I figure I put the stepper there because that'll be against the wall. And I left the handle on the right hand side just in case I ever have to do something or mess around with it or just jog it while I have the machine off. So anyways, what I'll go do is show you a little more detail on the bracket. Um, this here is just some 3 8 plate. Um, this here I just bored out the hole just to match this end here. You'll have to knock off. There's a little, um, the little guide that shows you where you are with your, your hand wheels. So take that off. I didn't even cut this one off. I just took everything right off and left it alone. So there's not much to that. And these are just some um, half-inch aluminum standoffs. I made them out of round aluminum. Some people use like a hex because then you can put it in the mill. However you want to do it. I have a lathe, so I just go ahead and went ahead and did it in there. So this really just fits right on like this. It's a kind of a tight fit just to keep it centered and I made it so that the top of it is flush with the end of the table. So holding it on is just two quarter twenty screws. So just go ahead and put those in there. I don't really worry too much about um, lock tightening everything because I have a tendency to take things apart and change my mind. So rather than have to deal with all that I just just make sure I have it nice and tight to begin with and I'll intermittently check it after every so many hours just to make sure that I'm not loosening everything up just from it um, you know, shaking around and all the vibration. So I just get those in there. They don't go all the way in. I didn't want to recess the head all the way because I don't want to make the material too thin. But just getting that just like that. So those are nice and tight. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is put the bearings back in on this side. I left them those out. So let me go ahead and uh, put some grease on those, get those going, and I'll put them back in. Okay, so I got the bearings back in. Um, this is my coupling. I think I showed it in one of the other videos a little bit more too. But what I have here is there is a slot in the shaft. Let me turn it here a little bit. I think you can see it down here, but um, these little screws, these are 632s, they will fit right in there. I just measured, figured out where it needed to be if I was right against the bearing, and then just drilled those holes and fit them there so they fit in that slot so it locks it in. So the way I usually put this in is I will go ahead and, uh, for my ease, just put that slot to the top. 
I have them all backed out, I will slide this on as far as it goes and then just kind of tighten that screw a little bit down until I know I'm in there and I can feel that I've locked into place. And I'll check and see that I'm turning the other side and just snug that down. That one's a real small head that's just an actual uh, set screw style just so it fits in there because I changed my mind again. This is a socket head and I'll just tighten that one down. So now I have both the screws that go into the slot tightened down. And around the sides I have uh, some 1024 screws that I put in there. Those are just extra for rigidity because I found that I was actually loosening up. And you can buy a lot better couplings than this. I made these because I didn't really want to go through the trouble of changing. I didn't, I didn't want to have to cut everything. A lot of people said they had to cut the end of the, the threads off. And I figured I might as well just keep it as close to it as I can, just so in case I need to change anything or if I ever want to have, you know, I have to manual mill something because I break something. I don't want to have to deal with having to readjust it from there. So there's that. I know I'm solid on there now. I'm going to go ahead and take these. These are just some more 1024 that hold the stepper on. I leave them in there just so I don't lose them because these are all... I bought a bunch of stainless ones just because that was the... Well, the nicest looking ones, and they had the sizes I needed. I had to go to Lowe's around here because there's nothing else better. So I'm going to grab the stepper. Now I got these cables kind of going wacky directions just because I'm going to retake apart everything. So I would normally put it behind the machine. So on the stepper you have a flat. I'm going to put that flat towards the top where I have this and just try to get it in as much as I can. I'm still not all the way in here, but I'm going to just put it on there and then just tighten down the two set screws that go against the flat just so they'll grab it. So now I knew it. You grab that. I'm going to hold the stepper and just rotate it and make sure I'm grabbing it. So it's properly on there. What I'll go ahead and do now is just go ahead and uh, put these screws in here, tighten them down. That'll take just a second here. And then we'll go to finishing that. Okay, I forgot to mention as you're tightening down, these down the way I did that, you got to make sure you loosen these get set screws up again uh, just to let the motor slide. I just had it there because I know I'm locked solid. So I'm just going to now just go ahead and finish snugging these down. Again, don't need to go too crazy because that's kind of metal on metal contact. So I'm not too worried about. All right, now I'm going to tighten down the set screws. I'll uh, just tighten these two down first. I know they're kind of slightly off center because I didn't make that perfect, but for the most part, I don't have any problems with this one. I'd be causing some run out on that. Rotate it just so I can get the next one. All right, go to the next. Now I'm just going to go through and just make sure they're all snug down. Those are good. Let's go back and check set screws on this side, the actual table side. Take that a little bit. That one's nice. Get this one. And I'll get the other the other two larger ones on the sides. Good. Good. Alright, so everything on the stepper is set. We are good to go. What I'm going to go ahead and do is just turn the computer on and get everything going and then just give it a quick test to see how everything goes. Okay, just do a quick test of it going. Uh, I can't remember the settings right now, but we're just going to test it so it doesn't really matter too much. So there's our Y that I did last time. And there's our X. So, still a few things that have to be set up in there. Uh, I got to, uh, actually I forgot to grease the lead screw, which I said I was going to do, but I forgot about it. So I will go ahead and grease that after this. And I'm also going to have to reset all of the steps in there and calibrate that. I will do that in a future episode. But next up, I'm going to take apart the Z-axis. So wait for that, and see you next time. Thanks.